go. Our regular Wednesday crew is here and fired up. Ryan Clark is ready. Dominique Foxworth. Desmond is here. Dan Graziano. We also have Mel and Todd coming up. Heather and Paul. We are busy. And it starts with Wednesday afternoon football. The Ravens have arrived in Pittsburgh as of now. Today's game is on, even though Baltimore had two more positive COVID tests before departing yesterday. The results, according to Shefty, are, quote, not unexpected and not a concern for the game. The source told that to our Adam Schefter. Here's a look at the Ravens players on the reserve COVID list. Multiple starters on both sides of the ball with 16 players on the list entering the day. I should point out the running backs, Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins, are eligible to return as soon as today. So they should be able to play. But it is not yet a total certainty that the game will be played. Dan Graziano, explain the latest. Yeah, total certainty is a pretty elusive concept in 2020, <laughs> so we are still waiting to make sure. Look, at the beginning of the year, the NFL was not testing people on game days because they couldn't get the results back in time, but they've changed that policy over the last couple of months, and they now administer point-of-care rapid result tests on game days. So Pittsburgh will have them, the Ravens will have them before they leave their team hotel, and if there are a bunch of positives that come back off of that, it is still possible that they move this game back to another week or cancel it. I mean, there's a lot of, of different things that could still happen. So the hope, obviously, is that all those tests come back clean, that there's no reason for concern that the outbreak that the Ravens have been dealing with for the past week and a half continues to spread, and they are able to kick off this game in just under uh, at this point, what, about eight hours? So that that's the hope. But yes, there is another round of testing that has to take place uh, before this game can start today. All right, so stay close by, Dan. I want to bring the rest of the crew in here, and let's talk about this a little bit, because look, we get a Wednesday afternoon NFL game, so if we're fans, that's obviously in some ways an exciting opportunity. I'll be home with nothing better to do than watch this, that's for sure. So, Ryan Clark, let me start with you. What is this game today for the Steelers? You're getting a Baltimore team. You've waited a week and a half to play it. You're getting a Ravens team without Lamar Jackson. You're a former Steeler. You're going on the field today. What are you thinking going in? I mean, when you go out on this field, you think it put your foot on the Baltimore Ravens next. Listen, these ain't our homeboys. These aren't our friends. The one thing you do, you hope that they get through the COVID concerns. And after that, that's where your concern stops for this team. Listen, if Michael Jackson went to that parking lot on, on I'm Bad to dance and there was no Michael Jackson, would you still have the dance off? Hell yeah, you would have the dance off and you would flat out kill him. And that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers are thinking right now. When they get on the field, they need to make sure that they know early and often them, that this is a game of physicality and you don't have the horses to play. You're in the turf war and you don't have your big hitters. And that's what Mike Tomlin is going to focus on. He's not going to focus on the postponements. He's not going to focus on the fact that it's Wednesday at 340. He's going to focus on the fact that he's leading a group of sharks and there is blood in the water. And that's the way they're going to look at it. It helps that it's the Baltimore Ravens. It helps that you don't like them already. It helps that somehow you can find a way to blame them for the reason you're playing on Wednesday at 340. So you have a reason to be pissed off and you have somebody to take it out on. And that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers have to do from the very first whistle because Baltimore already has a little doubt. Let's take every bit of doubt away by the way we hit them in the mouth on play one. And that's going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers mission. That's an excellent point, and it's also worth pointing out, we just talked about it on SportsCenter, this is a very important game for both teams. The Steelers are only one game clear of Kansas City for the one seed. The Ravens right now are on the outside of the playoff picture looking in. So my former Raven is Dominique Foxworth. Neek, playing without Lamar Jackson, can they win this game? It's a long shot, but I think that showing up to the dance-off, you forget that Wesley Snipes and Detective Torres was on the other side. It's not like they didn't have no weapons on the other side. The Ravens still got ballers. So I know that their top guy isn't there, but the rest of that team can play. That defense is still loaded. They're still going to come after you, and they still respect you and understand that division. And everyone knows divisional matchups matter. When you're comfortable with a team, when you're familiar with the team, sometimes the talent isn't as important. But I think it'd be nonsense to pretend like the Ravens shouldn't be big underdogs today because they're not only missing their quarterback, they haven't really had a chance to practice. Their running backs are just getting back. They have injuries put aside the COVID concerns. They have a ton of injuries putting them at a dis disadvantage. And then we saw the list of players that they have out today because of COVID. It's really tough if you don't practice and you don't have your players to show up and win a game against an undefeated Steelers team.
Now, rarely would we say the Ravens beating the Steelers would feel like a monumental upset. Today, it actually might. Desmond Howard, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. It, it would feel like a huge upset if they're able to pull it off. But I, I agree with RC. I mean, if I'm the Steelers, I'm just going to go out there and try to demolish them. I'm like looking at Roger Goodell, like you're yeah. going to give us this layup, huh, Roger? My man, I love you for this. <laughs> and go out there and just handle your business. You're playing against a team that you already don't like. There's a lot of disrespect. You hate these guys. Competitive hate, obviously. But yeah, you go out there and you handle your business. Now, you can't assume this is okay, they're B team, and you know, we have to take it light. These are still professional NFL players. I mean, these guys are, are football players. So yep. you go out there with the same mentality that you, you would have if Lamar Jackson and these other guys were lining up and they were going up against you, and you go and you handle your business. But it's really it's just crazy to me that, that Roger Goodell would, ha would hand the Pittsburgh Steelers this alley-oop like this. This is crazy. I, I guess the question <laughs> does remain, was there a better option out there? The, the objective is to get the game played. If it has to be played on a Wednesday and it has to be played at 3.40 in the afternoon because they're lighting the tree on NBC tonight, then so <laughs> be it. We got Wednesday afternoon football and we'll be ready for it. Meanwhile, let's go around the National Football League a little bit. We'll get to the Eagles. They have used 22 different offensive line combinations so far this year. That is the most in the NFL. That's part of the trouble they've had. They've given up 46 sacks, eight more than any other team in the league. And under all of that pressure, their quarterback, Carson Wentz, is throwing the ball to receivers who aren't open. According to our Next Gen stats, Wentz has tallied 78 tight window throws this year, second most in the league. And so not surprisingly, all of that doesn't end well. Wentz has thrown four more picks than any other quarterback. Here's coach Doug Peterson on the state of his QB. The struggles we had last night weren't weren't from the quarterback position. It was it was a bunch of mistakes from from all positions that caused us to not be as successful. But but as far as the rotation goes, you'd like to be in a little more more of a rhythm. If it were Jalen in there, maybe he goes a couple plays in a row. You know, and obviously if Carson's in there, he takes the bulk of the action. They're both professionals. They understand and and um, they expect nothing uh, nothing less. Okay, so that was a lot of words. Uh, Dominique Foxworth, what? I don't know. It seems like he's gotten worse at doing press conferences. His press conference last week was kind of a shame, <laughs> and this one makes even less sense. It feels like he's like a lawyer, like a defense attorney for a criminal who we all watch commit the crime, and he's trying to convince us that he didn't. <laughs> we saw Carson Wentz throw that ball right to the defense. Like, we saw it. We saw him out there doing nonsense, so I agree. He didn't get a ton of help, but we watched him. I mean, the glove fits. We got to be honest with